Hello, Fox. Alicia looked up from her computer screen. Sylvia, one of her colleagues, was smiling widely, clearly excited about something. What's happened? Alicia asked with a smile. Wendy's wedding is in a few weeks, and some of the girls are talking about throwing her a bachelorette party. Vanessa's husband is leaving next week, so she suggested hosting the party at her house. Her parents will look after the children. The party will be through Saturday. Are you in? Oh, well. Oh, come on, Sylvia insisted. Don't be a bore. Although Alicia Samuelson was relatively new to the firm, she was older than all the secretaries, but only by a few years. However, she somehow earned a reputation as an old bore. It wasn't that she didn't like to have fun, it was just that she didn't have much in common with the others. However, the group always seemed to have so much fun when they got together. It would be nice if she were invited to dinner sometimes. Suddenly she realized that this was an opportunity to show them that she could have as much fun as they did. I was just going to check with my husband to make sure we didn't have any plans, but I can't remember anything about it. Yes, sign me up, she replied enthusiastically. Great, Sylvia replied with a hidden agenda. Previously, the girls decided to hire a male dancer. It was supposed to cost 175 bucks. The more girls chip in, the cheaper it will be for everyone. She hoped Alicia wouldn't refuse when they told her she had to pay. Now, Wendy knows about the party, but doesn't know that we are hiring a male dancer. She already had a bridal shower with her bridesmaids and her personal friends, but this will be a private party. Just us girls, so it will cost each of us $30. I have to give them a credit card number to secure payment, but I can't let them charge my card. My husband will see this and throw ten tantrums. I just spoke with the agency, and we will pay the dancer in cash when he arrives. We will, of course, receive a receipt, but this way the charge will not appear on my card. I'd like to have cash by the end of the week. This way, no one will worry about forgetting them on the night of the party. Does this suit you? Sure, no problem, Alicia replied, determined not to be a bore. Great. Oh, and you should bring some extra money to put in his thong, you know what I mean? Sylvia asked with a malicious smile. Playing along, Alicia responded with a mischievous, yeah, and her devilish smile. Oh, Vanessa volunteered to prepare the appetizers, but the drinks will be biob, Sylvia added casually. No problem. When Sylvia left, Alicia couldn't help but feel a little nervous. She understood perfectly well that she was invited only to contribute money for entertainment, but still. As long as she worked there, she never managed to break into the company of other secretaries. She was sure that this would change after the party. Damn, she was just as friendly and fun as everyone else. Alicia was later surprised to see her husband's SUV in the driveway when she pulled up. He had his own photography studio and was rarely home before seven or half past eight in the evening. But it was a Wednesday. She was sure it was the day he had a big shoot on location somewhere out of state. He had been preparing for this for several days. He left home around three in the morning, and she didn't expect him home until late in the evening. Dexter was just sorting out the mail when she walked in. Hello, darling, she said, throwing her arms around his neck and kissing his smiling face. How are you home so early? Did something really go wrong during the shoot? She asked, looking into his blue eyes. No. In fact, everything went like clockwork. Cindy did a great job with the organization. I can't thank you enough for recommending her as my new assistant. It was she who suggested filming in Michigan. At first I didn't want to travel that far, but she convinced me it was worth it. And she was right. It's much easier to work there than in Illinois. We blocked off most of the beach and didn't even need permits. When we just started installing the equipment, the police arrived. At first I thought, damn, everything was going too smoothly, but unlike the Chicago cops, they weren't there to bother us or stare at the models. These guys said they heard about us and wanted to know how they could help. Is it true? Alicia answered in surprise. She couldn't count the number of times she had to calm down her angry husband because of the bureaucratic red tape he faced at work. Yes, Cindy even convinced the makeup artist and hair stylist to show up on time. I couldn't believe it. This never happens. 
everything went without a hitch. After only four hours of filming, the ad agency representative said we had enough material for the campaign he was working on and declared the shoot over. Who am I to argue with a client, he joked. I'm so glad Cindy is doing well. I was a little afraid to vouch for her, but I thought that if she was even a little like her mother, she would be conscientious and a good worker. I have known Laura since childhood. She was always the big sister I never had, and when she called and said her daughter had just graduated from college and was interested in photography well, you just lost your previous assistant and... And I am very grateful to you, he said, echoing his wife's words. Listen, I came straight home. I didn't even bring the equipment into the studio. It's still in the car, so we'll have to lock it in the garage and drive your car, he told his puzzled wife. Where are we going? I thought I'd invite you out tonight, so I made a reservation at Plato's. This day promised to be just great for Alicia. First she had been invited to a party with her colleagues, then her husband had surprised her by coming home early, and now they were going to her favorite restaurant. Undoubtedly, in the evening they will also have a night of love. Damn it, she thought, it couldn't get any better. A big smile stretched across her beautiful face before she thanked her wonderful husband with a passionate kiss. Oh, she said, quickly tearing their lips apart. How long are we booked for? At seven, he informed her. I need to hurry up and take a shower, she said, pulling away from his embrace. Me too, Dex replied. I'll rub your back if you rub mine. Now his smile was even wider than hers. They used to often have fun together in the shower, but lately their schedules had been so different that they had not been able to fulfill their duty to save water. Whoever is last is a rotten egg, Alicia shouted, running away, several steps ahead of him. Once upstairs, Alicia went straight to the shower and turned on the water. While she was waiting for it to warm up, she looked out of the bathroom to check if Dexter was there. He was nowhere to be seen. Not paying attention to her surroundings, she walked into the bedroom, unbuttoning her blouse. Almost undressed, she felt someone's arms wrap around her from behind and gently begin to remove her clothes, while a pair of lips gently kissed her bare shoulder. Alicia closed her eyes and leaned her head back on his shoulder. Hmm, she purred, instinctively reaching up to connect their lips. She felt his hands penetrate her unbuttoned blouse and cup her breasts. If we don't get into the shower, we'll never make it to dinner, she whispered. They watched each other as they undressed and then stepped under the soothing stream of water. Dexter took her lavender-scented soap and poured a generous amount into his palm. Gently his hands slid along the smooth and slippery curves of his wife's body. In response, Alicia took her husband's shower gel. She loved the feel of his muscular torso. She also loved the look of pure pleasure on his face and the way she could make his knees go weak when she washed him. Together they drove each other to a sexual frenzy that could only be pacified in one way. They had sex. Honey, we don't have plans for Saturday in a week, do we? Alicia asked as Dex cut his steak. Next Saturday, he repeated, trying to remember. I think no. What are you planning? Well, the girls from the office are throwing a bachelorette party for Wendy, and I'd like to go. Certainly, I don't think we have any plans. See, didn't you say recently that you think the girls in the office don't like you? I doubt they would have invited you to the party if that was the case, he encouraged her. Yeah, to be honest, I was a little surprised. She decided not to tell her loving husband the real reason for her invitation they needed her money for the dancer. Unofficially, we were also invited to the wedding. Wendy said the invitation will arrive this week. Okay, sure, Dexter agreed. When will it be? Last Saturday in June, I've already marked it on my home calendar. I hope we can go. Dexter savored the juicy taste of his tea steak while quickly thinking about his immediate schedule. I'm sure I don't have anything planned for this weekend, honey. Remind me and I'll block this time in my work calendar as soon as we get home. Alicia smiled. She had something else in mind for when they got home. Their funny little shower scene only whetted her appetite for a night of serious lovemaking. Would it be okay if I reminded you tomorrow morning? She asked with a sly, small smile. 
he immediately understood her intention. That's why he was so surprised later that night when they returned home. Alicia stood up to help him take off his jacket. Honey, do you mind if we don't make love today? She'd been hinting at it all night. Hearing that she had changed her mind was disappointing, to say the least, until she added, Tonight I want you to fuck me. I want to be taken, she said with a big smile. I can arrange it, he exclaimed. Alicia screamed as her knight in shining armor scooped her up into his arms. She giggled, wrapping her arms around his neck and pressing herself against his chest. They had passionate sex. That was a great start, Alicia breathed between breaths. Give me a minute and I'll start preparing you for round two. And she did it. And the third round too. They finally fell asleep around three in the morning. Both were still smiling widely at breakfast the next morning. Honey, I need to remind you to block time for Wendy's wedding. Already done, he replied. I also texted Cindy to make sure she didn't book anything before I came to the office. Everything is ready, honey. Thank you, darling. As she crossed the kitchen to thank him with a kiss, it occurred to her what a wonderful husband she had. She was incredibly happy in their life together. She made sure he understood it when her small kiss of thanks turned into a passionate, all-consuming kiss that left no room for words. I love you, darling, he said when their lips finally parted. And I love you, she replied. On her way to work, Alicia stopped at an ATM. She didn't care about $35. Dex never asked questions about such small amounts, so she calmly used her debit card. She had the opportunity to pay back when she saw Sylvia in the break room with several other girls. She checked that Wendy was not nearby before speaking. Sylvia, here's my money for the dancer, she said, approaching her colleague with cash in hand. Thank you, Sylvia said, taking the money. Hey Fox, are you coming to Wendy's party? asked Vicky, the other secretary. Yeah, that sounds like fun, Alicia replied. Okay, the more the merrier. Another of the girls laughed. Over the next week, just knowing that she was going to a party, Alicia seemed to become closer to the team. Suddenly, she had company on coffee breaks. Mostly, Alicia thought the conversations were stupid, but she still enjoyed talking to women. On the Thursday before the party, she was invited to lunch with all the girls. She followed them as they all walked two blocks from the office and entered one of the best restaurants. One more than usual, Sylvia told the hostess as they entered. The waiter quickly found the seventh chair and immediately brought it to their table. Vanessa instantly set the topic of conversation as soon as everyone sat down. So, Wendy, tell us about your dress. Will you wear white? Of course, she replied with a giggle. Everyone laughed at the bride-to-be's expense, and Wendy continued to describe her dress, veil, shoes, and lingerie in detail. The next topic was plans for the honeymoon. Everyone listened with varying degrees of envy as Wendy talked about her two-week fantasy in Hawaii. As Wendy's monologue came to an end, Meredith turned the conversation to the new girl. So, Alicia, I heard that your husband is a photographer. What does he photograph like weddings and stuff? Alicia happily took up the topic, especially when it meant a chance to show off. She was proud of Dexter and his work. No, Dex hates shooting weddings. He did it for a couple of friends, but he would never do it professionally. Has anyone seen that big billboard on 94th at the Mannheim exit? With a picture of a girl's hand with a watch encrusted with diamonds? A couple of girls nodded that they had seen him. This is one of Dexter's jobs. He's a commercial photographer. He mainly works with advertising agencies. He has his own studio in the city center, but he also often travels to various locations. Last week, he had to go to Michigan and shoot photographs for women's clothing. Oh, one of those photographers, Meredith said disdainfully. Everyone around the table looked at her questioningly as she continued. Aren't you jealous? Jealous? Alicia asked. Oh, you mean because he works with models? Well, yes, I know these guys. I had a friend in college who was into modeling. She said that they were all preoccupied, and if she didn't give in, she didn't get the job. She had to sleep with every photographer who hired her. Suddenly, there was silence at the table. 
Everyone internally gasped at the rudeness of her words. Alicia felt her blood boil. She wanted to get up and spank this smug bitch, but this would probably lead to her expulsion from the team. She tried to calm down and spoke almost monotonously. Dexter is a very successful commercial photographer. Advertising agencies usually hire models, and even when he hires them himself, he is a loving and faithful husband. I trust him completely. He also treats his profession with respect and would never. She raised her voice to emphasize the word, would desecrate his name, reputation, or profession in such a manner. Yet yeah, Meredith, your friend from college, was just easy to get to, that's all, Sylvia chimed in, trying to ease the tension. Everyone laughed nervously at Sylvia's remark. Everyone except Meredith, she didn't find it funny, but looking at the faces of the others, she realized that they didn't like her caustic remarks either. When everyone had paid their bills and were about to leave, Alicia was still angry about the attack on her husband. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to be excluded from this group, she thought as they all returned to the office. Later in the day, Sylvia and Vicky, another of the secretaries who were at lunch, came to her table. Fox, trying not to be offended by what Meredith said today, please. She has no proof, but she thinks her husband Dave is cheating on her, and, well, I guess she's just not in the mood for men right now, Sylvia said, trying to apologize for her co-star. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, I wasn't offended, she replied. Shortly after, Meredith herself came over to apologize. Alicia wasn't sure if she did it herself or if the other girls had pressured her, but she sounded sincere, so by the time she left that evening, all was forgiven. The next day, Alicia was invited back to lunch with the girls. Despite the still palpable tension in the air, the conversation was light and cheerful. Alicia had a good time and finally decided not to hold a grudge for Meredith's comments. As the day came to an end, all the girls gathered on their way to the parking lot. Sylvia, who was basically organizing the entire party, wanted to make sure everyone knew when and where to be the next evening. So, does everyone have Vanessa's address? Everything was confirmed. Okay, at 7.30 at her house. Try not to be late. Oh, this will be so much fun. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it, Wendy enthused. The next morning, Alicia woke up in a good mood. She looked at the sleeping figure next to her. She wanted to play, but the poor guy spent half the night editing the photos he took the day before. She watched him breathe rhythmically, in and out with a slight snore. She gently stroked his face with her fingers and decided to let him sleep. Carefully, she tossed the blanket to the side, swung her legs over the side of the bed, and began to stand up when she felt strong arms wrap around her from behind. Where are you going? Dexter said, playfully pulling her back into bed. Alicia laughed as she found herself in her lover's arms. I thought you were sleeping, she said, giggling. Before he met his wife, Dexter was a young, good-looking photographer who had more of his own pleasures, but none of them compared to what his wife did. The day went on as usual until evening came. Alicia wanted to look good for the party and decided to start preparing early. Honey, do you mind if we just order pizza for dinner? I don't really want to cook and I need to start getting ready for the party pretty soon. Party? What party? I have theater tickets for tonight. Alicia turned around in panic and looked at her husband with a sly smile. He tried to keep a serious expression, but couldn't. His playful laugh and sparkling eyes told the worried woman that her husband was only joking. Oh, Dex, you had me. For a moment, I actually thought you forgot. No, honey, I haven't forgotten he replied with a wide smile. Do you want me to call and order pizza now? Yeah, honey, that's probably a good idea. I need to jump in the shower soon. Dexter called to order their favorite thin crust pizza and then put the coffee on while Alicia went upstairs to decide what she would wear. When the courier rang the doorbell, she had already chosen her entire outfit and laid it out on the bed. Sitting at the kitchen table, enjoying a crispy pizza, Dexter noticed the excitement in his wife's eyes. It's important to you, yes, Fox. Yes, I guess so, she admitted with a slight sigh. Remember my friends in college? 
We were like the three musketeers. We did everything together. Her thoughts went back to the past for a moment. I miss this, the interaction. But I don't understand. You've never had trouble making friends. Why don't these girls like you? I don't know, she replied. When I first started working there, everything was new. I was passionate about studying. I think I was too focused on work and didn't socialize enough. They invited me to lunch several times, but I wanted to study the materials, so I refused. I think they all thought I wasn't friendly. Sometimes the girls would be in the break room, joking and laughing, but as soon as I came in, the conversations died down, and soon they all left. I'm sure you're just imagining all this, honey, Dex said, trying to calm her down. Dex, I've been working there for almost a year, and just this Thursday they invited me to lunch for the first time since I started working there. See, it's already a start, he said with an optimistic note in his voice. They just have to recognize you, that's all. Yeah, I think so too and this party is a chance to show them what I'm really like. Outside of work, I really want to make a good impression. Just be yourself, honey. No one can resist your sparkling personality. Thank you, darling. That's what I'm going to do, be myself and have fun. Well, if you're having so much fun that you can't drive home tonight, call me. I'll come and pick you up, can you hear me? Yes, I hear, she replied with a grateful smile. Well, I better get in the shower and start getting ready, she said, jumping up from the table. I don't want to be late. More than an hour later, Dexter was sitting in his home office, looking through photos that needed editing, when Alicia appeared and took a seductive pose in the doorway. What do I look like? she asked in her best Lauren Bacall impersonation voice. Dexter had to hold his breath as he looked up from the computer screen and saw the amazing creature in front of him. Damn, honey, you look amazing. Are you sure you don't have a hot date? A date with destiny, she joked, pressing the back of her hand to her forehead, Sarah Bernhardt style. They both laughed. They are all younger than me. I just want to show them that I'm not out of the game yet. Isn't that too much? No, it's just in moderation, replied her proud husband. On the way, she first stopped at an ATM and withdrew $40, then stopped at a liquor store for a couple of bottles of alcohol. The seller was delighted when she asked for change and small bills. He had less to count at the end of his shift. Alicia could already hear laughter as she approached the party site and rang the doorbell. Fox, shouted Vanessa, who was clearly already under the driver. Come on in, we're just getting started. Already at the party were Wendy, the guest of honor, Sylvia, who was holding a cell phone and filming her arrival, and, of course, Vanessa, the hostess. A little later, the others arrived. Vicky, Mindy, and Meredith completed the entire secretarial pool from Johnson Insurance. At first, like any new person, Alicia felt a little nervous. These girls were clearly good friends, every single one of them. She wanted to join. She wanted to be accepted and have fun at work like they did. She soon realized where most of the fun was coming from. Vanessa had an amazing repertoire of dirty jokes. Her husband was a sales representative who spent most of his time traveling. He exchanged jokes with clients and then took them home and shared them with Vanessa. Dirty jokes followed one after another. Half an hour later, Alicia's jaw was already hurting from laughing. An hour into the party, she relaxed and enjoyed the company. She had already told the only two dirty jokes she knew and laughed at them. When Alicia walked over to the alcohol table to mix her third cocktail, she was a little surprised at herself. She was already starting to feel the effects of the first two. Well, she thought with a slight smile, this is what she was missing. Most of her university friends were scattered all over the country. Sure, he and Dex had mutual friends, but they were their friends. Alicia wanted her own friends, and these girls seemed like fun, and they finally accepted her as part of the group. Goodbye to lonely, boring days at work, she was sure. She took a stick and stirred the drink before taking a sip. So, she told herself as she returned to her new friends, if my husband has to come and pick me up, so be it. As soon as she sat down, the doorbell rang. Vanessa jumped up and headed in the opposite direction. Wendy, 
please open the door. I urgently need to go to the ladies' room, she said, heading to the bathroom. As soon as Wendy turned her back, everyone stood up quietly. Quietly everyone followed the unsuspecting girl who opened the door. Sylvia kept her phone ready to film the surprise. Yes, officer. Wendy didn't understand why there was a policeman at the door. She just noticed that he was damn cute. Ma'am, are you having a party? Some neighbors call and complain about the noise, he said with authority in his voice. Oh, I'm so sorry, Wendy replied. I didn't realize we were making so much noise. I promise we'll be quiet. Sorry, but that's not enough, he stated, walking into the house and standing next to her. I am arresting you for disturbing the peace. Please turn around and put your hands behind your back. What? No, I... I don't even live here. I... In a panic, she turned to her friends, looking for help. At that moment, she saw grins on their faces. Okay, what's going on here? Everyone burst out laughing, including Alicia. At that moment, the handsome cop tossed his hat into the living room, reached for the boombox hidden behind the door, and turned on the music. Wendy, finally realizing what was happening, clapped her hands and screamed in delight. Without wasting a moment, the professional dancer followed everyone to the center of the room, where chairs were arranged in a circle. Each of the delighted secretaries took their seats and watched as their sexy guest took center stage. Not wanting to miss a second, Sylvia placed her phone on the lamp to film the entire performance. A few drinks and dirty jokes had already loosened their tongues, and they were all in the mood to party. Cheers, whistles, applause and screams filled the air as the dancer began removing his clothes to the beat of the music. Swirling his hips like a young Elvis, he was the first to shed his pistol belt. Anticipation grew as the holster and toy gun fell to the floor. Excited screams rang out as he removed all the clothes from his torso, waved them over his wavy black mane, and threw them towards the guest of honor. Wendy grabbed her out of the air and pinned her to her knees. He'd only been in the show for a few minutes, but he was already making hearts beat faster when he pulled his pants down in one motion. Shake that ass, screamed a breathless Mindy. Shake that ass. Vicky added, take it off, take everything off. Under the influence of alcohol, the instincts feel like stones as the ominous music worked its voodoo magic. Dollars turned into fives and tens as the girls tried to persuade the artist to take off his last shred of modesty. When he approached Sylvia, she could not stand it. Pure screams of delight shook the house as she reached out with both hands and pulled the small piece of fabric down to his knees. The agency had a strict ban on full nudity and touching. The rules would require that the show stop immediately, but this was not the first time, and he knew without a doubt that by the end of the evening he would enjoy himself. Okay, you wanted to see him, now do something with him, he told her. It was like feeding sharks, each woman taking turns. Suddenly, spellbound, Alicia found herself face to face with dignity. Come on, Fox, I bet you can't do it. Do, Meredith egged her on. She didn't count on it. Never in her wildest fantasies did she think that she would be asked to cheat on her husband. Concentrating on her dilemma, she seemed to stop hearing and seeing her surroundings. The loud music and the excited cries of the other girls disappeared into the background. The inner voice of her mind appeared. What are you doing? she asked herself. You have a wonderful and faithful husband at home. You can't do it, but what will the girls think if I don't do it? The whole purpose of coming to the party was to become part of the group. She's having so much fun. She didn't want to risk losing her new friends, and it's, well, it's not really cheating, not really, it's just fun, right? She became aware of the others' presence again as they laughed at her suppressed sound. Confused, she quickly pulled away. Come here, officer, Mindy said. I'll show her how it's done. Alicia breathed a sigh of relief when he turned and walked towards the new pair of girls, but realized that the respite was temporary. He will be in front of her again. Alicia watched him, struggling with her conscience. He was getting closer. Soon he would be standing in front of her again. The others showed no hesitation. By the time he returned to her for a second try, Alicia had already made up her mind. 
She knew she would be racked with guilt, but the only witnesses to her betrayal were those in the room, and they were just as guilty as she was. No one could convey, which meant the husbands would never find out. Come on, Fox, show us how it's done, someone from the group urged, and she did it. As soon as she pulled away, he walked towards Sylvia to begin the third circle. By the time he approached her again, Alicia's guilt had already taken over, but she knew it was something she would have to live with. She couldn't change anything now, it was done she could only try to enjoy the moment and show the girls her technique. No one even noticed her frightened expression as Alicia rushed to the bathroom. Salty tears of disgust and shame flowed down her cheeks as Alicia locked herself in the bathroom. Frantically, she grabbed a towel from the rack and brought it under the tap. Several minutes of furious scrubbing, and finally she was sure that her skin was cleansed of the traces of her betrayal. If only she could cleanse her soul the same way, she thought, looking at herself in the mirror of the medicine cabinet. Several minutes passed before she heard a knock on the door. Fox, are you okay? It was Sylvia. She needed to pull herself together. She couldn't let her friends see her like this. Yes, she replied. I'll come out now. She checked her reflection in the mirror. She looked terrible. My eyes were red and puffy from washing my face, and all my makeup was gone. Her purse was in the living room, so there was no way to even touch up her makeup before going out to the others again. She quickly came up with a little lie. Sylvia was still standing at the door when she left the bathroom. Fox, were you crying? Alicia was relieved to note that the subject of her fall had already collected his money and left. All she wanted was to get out of there as quickly as possible, but she couldn't. She needed to stay long enough to help with the cleanup. Once she decided to stay until the end of the party, Mindy saved the day. Well, girls, I have to leave. Mark and I have an early mass tomorrow. What can I do to help clean up before I leave? She asked, looking at Vanessa. Everyone looked at each other. Now that the fun was over, everything else seemed boring. Yes, I have to go too, Vicky commented. Alicia saw her chance. And me too. Dex and I have a lot to do tomorrow. We really need to start early. What can we do to help clean up, Vanessa? Well, looks like the party is over. Their hostess jokes. There's really not a lot to clean up here. If you girls help me with the chairs, I can handle everything else. Terry won't be home until tomorrow evening, so I'll have plenty of time to get everything done tomorrow. She was right. There really wasn't much to clean up, but everyone still helped. Half an hour later, everyone had already gone home. It was ten o'clock. Thank God, Alicia thought. She never said how late she would return, but she knew that he did not expect her home so early. She had time. Time to process what had happened. She needed time to try to rid herself of the overwhelming guilt before confronting Dexter. There was no doubt in her mind that one glance would be enough for him to immediately understand that something was wrong. She wondered if the redness and puffiness around her eyes had gone away yet. This reminded her that she also needed to reapply her makeup. Up ahead, she noticed a familiar Denny's restaurant sign. She found a two-person booth against the wall and ordered coffee. Sitting there, she again felt like she wanted to cry, but she managed to hold back. Okay, it's over, I did it once, but never again, she told herself. Never, never again. Alicia was scared to death to go home. She was sure that her sins were written on her face and her husband would read everything. I must behave naturally, she told herself. One look at me and he'll understand. He'll understand what I did. All the way home in the car, she repeated to herself, never again. It was almost midnight when she walked through the door. Dexter fell asleep on the couch, but woke up as soon as he heard her coming. Hey, my party girl, how did it go? It was fun, she replied. Is it true? Yes. This Vanessa knows more jokes than a late-night comedian. She kept everyone laughing all evening. What are you watching? She asked, trying to change the subject. Oh, I don't know, I don't even remember. I fell asleep, so whatever it was, it wasn't very good. He laughed. The anxious wife felt an uncontrollable desire. Without saying a word, she sat down next to her unsuspecting husband and hugged him tightly, resting her head on his chest. 
She felt the warmth and safety of his arm as he hugged her tighter. Do you mind if we just lay down and cuddle tonight? I'm very tired, but I want to feel you next to me, she told him. I want to fall asleep in your arms. And so they did. It took some time, but Alicia finally drifted off to sleep, nestling comfortably in her husband's arms. All Sunday, she was busy with household chores. Now only time could help time to forget, time to forgive yourself. On her way to work on Monday morning, she couldn't decide how she was feeling. She thought that returning to the stressful rhythm of work would help her forget. But there would be her new friends with whom she shared her shame. Even if they didn't let it slip, everyone knew what they did. Hello, Fox. Vanessa was the first to see her as she walked in and sat down in her seat. They exchanged pleasantries, but Mondays were always busy, and the secretaries had no time to chat until lunch. Up to this point, if she still had any doubts about being accepted into the group, they disappeared when everyone stopped by her table on the way to the restaurant. Hurry up, Fox, Sylvia recalled in a friendly manner. They only had an hour. The chatter began as soon as everyone sat down with the menu. Um, um this looks delicious, Vanessa said, pointing to an item on the menu. Cop stripper a la cam. Alicia couldn't believe how calm everyone was about it as they all burst out laughing. They have no shame, she wondered. God, he was so cute, Mindy added. Yes, Vicky replied. Of course, this caused a new burst of laughter. Sylvia reached over and took her phone out of her purse. Let's take a look, she said out loud, looking at the screen. Several necks immediately craned in one direction to better see what she was looking at. Wendy, who was sitting next to her, was the first to see what was on the screen. Oh, right, she exclaimed. You wrote it down. Let me see, she said, holding out her hand for the phone. Alicia was terrified. Did you write this down? She almost screamed. Certainly. I want to live this experience, as they say. Damn, he was so cute, Wendy said, smiling. Let me see, Meredith demanded, snatching the phone from Wendy's hands. Her eyes were still glued to the screen when the waiter approached. She quickly put the phone face down while everyone ordered, but as soon as he left, Meredith picked the phone up again and couldn't wait to continue watching. Let them go in a circle. Let everyone look, Sylvia asked. Alicia watched a small clip, but unlike the other girls who were enjoying their performances, she was horrified by what she was doing. She quickly passed the phone on. Sylvia, I hope you delete this. Why? Who will see this except us? Relax, Fox, Sylvia replied. Sylvia, if my husband sees this, I will be in big trouble. We're all going to have problems. The other girls looked at Sylvia, realizing that Alicia was right. Oh, don't tense up. I'm going to delete this, but if you're afraid someone will see, forget it. The only one who can see this is my husband, and in all the years that I have had my own phone, Manny has never touched it. The company he works for provides him with his own phone. Whatever, Mindy chimed in, the fox is right. If Mark had found out what happened, I'd be in divorce court by now, no doubt about it. Okay, okay, I won't keep this on my phone for long, so girls better enjoy it now, she chuckled. For the rest of the hour, the phone sat on the table, accessible to anyone who wanted to look more. Alicia was the only one who didn't touch him. It took several weeks before Alicia was able to go through a day without intense feelings of guilt. By the end of June, she had almost completely repressed it from her memory. Manny patiently drank coffee in the kitchen while waiting for his wife. Jennifer, their six-year-old daughter, was watching her morning cartoons in the living room, and Sylvia was still upstairs getting ready after all. She was one of the bridesmaids. She needed to look her best. She glanced at the clock on her dressing table. They still had to take Jennifer to her husband's parents on the way to the wedding, and time was running out. Nervously, she picked up the comb for one last attempt to straighten her hair. Manny had just seen his wife and couldn't believe how gorgeous she looked. She hadn't looked so beautiful since their own wedding, he thought. As he stood up to put his coffee cup in the sink, he got an idea. To take a selfie with her. Of course, there will be a photographer at the wedding, but he wanted to show it to the guys at work on Monday. 
The camera on his phone was very bad. Sylvia's camera was much better. He knew the photo would turn out better if he took it with her phone and then sent it to himself than if he took it with his camera. Her purse was in its usual place on the kitchen table near the garage door. Manny pulled her phone out of her purse and turned on the camera. When he did this, a thumbnail feed from the last time he used the camera automatically opened at the bottom of the screen. The last miniature caught his attention. What the hell, he thought, this must be from the bachelorette party she went to. Being a normal, curious man, he couldn't pass up the chance to see what really goes on at these parties, so he pressed play. The first couple of minutes of the video showed various women arriving. Manny didn't know many of them and was interested to see what his wife's colleagues looked like. Not bad, he told himself several times. He scrolled through most of the women's conversations, but stopped and went back when he saw everyone laughing to hear the jokes. He was already getting bored and was about to turn off the video when, Okay, that's it, I'm ready, Sylvia announced as she walked down the stairs. Damn, he muttered quietly under his breath and just in time for the most interesting moment, he thought. He wondered why Sylvia didn't say anything about the police showing up. Your beautiful mom, Jennifer said, looking up from the TV. I support this, Manny said, tucking the phone into his jacket pocket. You'll have to watch the continuation of Wendy's adventures later. Sylvia thanked the two important people in her life, took her purse, and they went to the wedding. As soon as they arrived at the church, Sylvia was taken to help the bride get dressed. Before Manny could think anything, he was asked to help decorate the cars for the ride from the church to the banquet hall. Of course, in order to announce the joyful newlyweds to as many Chicagoans as possible, the procession will take a very winding route. It was the perfect day for a wedding. The sun was shining through a bright blue sky and the temperature was perfect for the suit. Not too hot and not too cold. Several times, when he looked up from his duties, he recognized some of the women from the video as they entered the church with their husbands. He recognized Alicia immediately. He thought that she was the most beautiful of all the women he had seen, except for his wife, of course. Once the cars were decorated, it was time to take seats for the main event. The young man walked Manny to his place. Fifteen minutes passed before the music announced the start of the tuxedoed procession down the red carpet, each couple with a beautiful bridesmaid on their arm. Moments later, everyone took their place on stage. The familiar chords of the wedding march sounded from the huge organ, and all heads turned to the back of the church. Wearing a white dress symbolizing purity, Wendy was the picture of virtue and innocence as she took her father's arm and was proudly led to her groom. I pronounce you husband and wife. You can kiss the bride. Another one has bitten the dust, Manny thought quietly. As soon as the ceremony was over, Manny told his wife that he would be waiting for her outside. He knew she would be posing for photographs, and it would take some time. Sylvia saw Alicia and asked her and Dexter to accompany her husband until they finished with the photographer. Alicia, still eager to please, said it was no problem. She and her patient husband walked over to introduce themselves. Manny? Yes, he replied, turning towards the voice. He recognized her immediately, but of course he didn't want her to know how curious he was, so he let her take the lead. I'm Alicia. I work with your wife. This is my husband, Dexter. It's a pleasure, he said, shaking both hands. I guess my wife asked you to accompany me. Everyone laughed a little. You seem to know her well, Alicia jokes. Yes, well, she was only 18 when we got married that was almost nine years ago, he said. Dexter, you're a photographer, right? Yes, he answered, slightly surprised. I have a studio in the city center. This is cool. I regret not doing something like this. I'm a shift supervisor at Wesley's Foam Core factory. The pay is okay, but the work is deadly boring. Yeah, I use your display materials a lot, Dex replied. While they were talking, another member of the bachelorette party joined them. Alicia introduced Vanessa to the two men, then asked about her husband. Don't even mention that bastard, she replied sharply. He's on some big order in Minneapolis. He promised to be back for the wedding, damn it. 
Yesterday he called me from the airport and said that he was flying out. And then he called back and said that one of the technicians didn't understand something, and if he didn't come back, the whole deal could fall through. Oh, Vanessa, I'm so sorry, Alicia sympathized. Yes, Manny interjected. I'm sure he's not happy about the current situation either. Oh, I know, Vanessa agreed. He promised to make amends. He doesn't know yet, but it will cost him two weeks in Hawaii on his next vacation. This brought smiles to everyone's faces and led to discussions on various topics. Before they all knew it, Sylvia was already standing next to her husband. Once the formal photos were taken, everyone headed to the banquet hall. Manny was left alone again, since Sylvia had to stand in the receiving line. Leaving her at the door, Manny went to find their table. It was a good thing, he thought when he saw the nameplates, that Dexter and Alicia would also be sitting at the same table. He looked around and saw that they were communicating with others that he recognized from the video. The video, he almost forgot about it. He was the only one at the table, and he was really curious about what happened to Wendy at the party. He sat down and double-checked that no one was nearby or looking over his shoulder before pressing play. As soon as the video started, he saw the policeman throw his hat into the living room. What the hell, he muttered. Is he a dancer? They hired a damn dancer, he whispered to himself. Sylvia forgot to mention that little detail, he thought. He checked again to make sure no one was nearby, then continued to watch with irritated interest. Manny let out an audible gasp as he saw Sylvia pull down the dancer's thong. His mouth dropped open, looking at this in disbelief. It was like watching a car crash. It's terrible to see, but it's impossible to take your eyes off what's happening. Manny no longer worried about anyone being near him or looking over his shoulder. He was furious. Bitch! He shouted loudly just at the moment when everyone from the receiving line came inside. He looked straight at his wife and finished his sentence. Bitch! She looked at him with horror. She had no idea what had happened, but his behavior was unforgivable. Manny, she shouted back, what is wrong with you? This scream attracted the attention of many, including Dexter. He had just approached the table and was about to try to calm his new friend down. What is wrong with me? That's what's wrong with me, he shouted, waving his phone. He felt Dexter's hand on his shoulder. Manny, Manny, calm down, buddy, calm down. What is the problem? He turned to the potential calming influence. Here, Dexter, do you want to know what's wrong? Have you ever seen your wife satisfying some dancer? Here, here, see for yourself, he said, turning up the volume and thrusting the phone into Dexter's hand. See for yourself. Oh no, Sylvia cried. She heard the girls screaming in the video and finally realized that her husband was watching. Her legs gave way and her eyes instantly filled with tears. Alicia looked at her friend and also realized what was happening. She was seething internally. This is exactly what she was afraid of. Why didn't this bitch delete the video when everyone asked her to? Everything seemed to be happening in slow motion as she saw Dexter pick up the phone. Now there was no way she could prevent him from seeing what she had done. Dexter was so focused on trying to calm the situation that Manny's words didn't sink in right away. He glanced across the screen and recognized his significant other. He looked at Alicia with fire and brimstone in his eyes. Alicia didn't know what to do. I couldn't do anything. There was nothing she could say to ease the pain and anger she knew he felt. She stood there, completely unaware of her surroundings. She must have mentally apologized a thousand times before she realized that she had to actually open her mouth and say the words for him to hear them. Dexter, I'm sorry, I, we, it. She tried to apologize, but the words wouldn't come out maybe because there were no words. How do you apologize for desecrating the most sacred vow between a husband and wife? Angered by such outrageous behavior on the most important day of his life, the groom was now about to intervene as well. Wendy, who was standing next to him, grabbed his arm, trying to stop him from finding out what a bitch she was. Aaron, don't. He pulled his hand out of her grip and quickly approached the angry man who was causing all this commotion. His excited bride walked behind him. 
What the hell, man, it's my wedding, he half shouted, walking up to the table to confront the instigator. Oh yeah, Aaron, the groom, Manny said ominously. We can't forget about you either, really. Here, he said, taking the phone from Dexter and handing it to the young man. Look what your new wife does when you're not around. What the? He looked up just as a tear escaped his lower eyelid and rolled down his cheek. Honey, it, it was my bachelorette party. We, we were all drunk. It, everything just got out of control, she tried to explain. Dexter is tired of all this. He took out a business card from his wallet. Manny, could you send a copy of this to the address on this card? Manny took the card and said he would do it immediately. Dexter then took Alicia's hand none too gently. Come on, the party is over, he said coldly. Some of the other men heard familiar voices in the video. They knew their wives were also at Wendy's bachelorette party and began to gather around Manny as Dexter led his frightened wife away from the scene. Dexter's steps were long and determined. Alicia almost had to run in her high heels to keep up. She waited until they were in the car before making her first attempt at communication. Dexter, I, I don't know what to say. It's the two of us, he replied. Let's just not say anything. I'm not in the mood to talk right now. Alicia had never seen him so angry, especially at her. She knew not to insist. Even though she really wanted to continue apologizing, she remained silent the entire way home. When they entered the house, Dexter took a beer from the refrigerator, undid his tie and the top button of his shirt, and then sat down at the kitchen table. His thoughts were in chaos all the way home. He thought about how much free time his wife had when he worked late in the studio or stayed on night shoots. Alicia sat at the other end of the table and just waited. He seemed almost calm at this moment, but she expected him to explode at any minute. She didn't expect his first question. How long? She was puzzled. How long? Sorry, I do not understand. How long has this been going on? He asked sharply. How long have you been cheating on me? She didn't even think that he might think about other times. Of course, he must understand that this was the only time. Honey, I, I've never cheated on you, except for that one time at the party. You have to believe it. It was only once. Well, I don't believe it, Alicia. I saw the recording, remember? I would have thought that you were at least a little hesitant the first time, but you weren't. I saw you. No, no, it was. She tried to intervene, but Dexter didn't finish speaking. His words tore her heart apart. Her face was buried in her hands, and she was crying. This can't be true, she thought. How can he think like that? He should know that this was an isolated incident. Please, please, Dexter, you can't seriously think that I cheated on you before, this, this. Her sobs did not allow her to speak further. Dexter listened to her plea. It gave him no joy to see his wife in such a state, but he also suffered. I saw nothing on that tape to support your claim, Alicia, nothing. He sat quietly for a few moments, listening to her cry, and decided that he needed to leave. Alicia, I know you are suffering right now. You feel bad because you got caught, and you know you hurt me, and I'm sure that was never your intention. No, no, Dexter, I'm so sorry. He interrupted her again. This really doesn't help, Fox. I don't think you understand how much you hurt me. I don't think you have any idea what it's like. If it were a one-time thing, as you claim, then you should have come to me. You should have told me about this. That's another reason why I think this wasn't an isolated incident, Liz. If you had told me right away what happened, I wouldn't have liked it, but I would have forgiven you. But no, you didn't. Not only did you cheat, but you hid it from me. You and your so-called new girlfriends kept it a secret. Besides cheating, you were a liar. You knew they were going to bring in a dancer, didn't you? You didn't even think to mention it to me, right? You satisfied him, but you didn't think to say that either. So how do you expect me to believe you when you say this was the only time? Dexter, I swear. Sorry, Alicia, there's nothing you can say right now that would make me believe you. The grieving wife began to cry even more, but Dexter stood his ground. I need time to think, but I can't do that here. 
I'm going to pack some things and live in the studio for a while. No, oh no, Dexter, please, please stay with me. Don't go, please, she begged. I can't, Fox. Not now. I need time for myself. I have a lot to think about, and I have to be alone. She was still sitting at the kitchen table when he came down with the suitcase. He stopped at the door. Give me some time, Fox. I'll call you in two or three days, but please don't call me first. Dexter, I love you, she cried as he walked out. I love you too, he said quietly as he got into the car. Throughout the weekend, Dexter and her marital problems were on Alicia's mind. She didn't sleep all night on Saturday. She constantly berated herself, asking why she couldn't find the courage to simply refuse when the dancer approached her. She knew it was wrong, knew it would almost kill her husband if he ever found out, and she did it anyway. Looking back, she should have given it up and told him what happened when she got home. Of course, looking back, everything seems simpler but that opportunity is gone forever. When Monday morning arrived, Alicia had only gotten three or four hours of sleep the entire weekend and certainly didn't feel ready to go to work, but she needed something to take her mind off things. She wanted nothing more than to call Dexter and apologize until he forgave her, but she wanted to respect his request and wait for his call. So work seemed like a suitable distraction. The first thing Alicia noticed when she arrived at work was the unusual silence, especially for a Monday. She looked at the row of secretary's cubicles, but they were all empty. Then she noticed Vanessa's elbow. Are we alone here? she asked. Vanessa peeked around the partition to see who was speaking, then immediately stood up and beckoned Alicia over. Are you okay? she asked in a quiet voice. No, not really, she replied as tears began to form in her eyes again. Dexter spent the weekend in the studio. I'm afraid. I've never seen him like this. I'm so sorry, Fox. I can't believe Sylvia didn't delete that damn video. God, what a nightmare. And to think I was so mad at Terry for missing the wedding. If he had been there, I would have been in the same situation as everyone else. Deep down, Alicia was angry that Vanessa escaped punishment. She knew she shouldn't think that way, but she couldn't help it. After all, she was just as guilty as everyone else. It wasn't fair. After you left, everything went wrong, Vanessa continued. Both of Vicky and Mindy's husbands approached Manny as soon as you left. Vicky's husband didn't say anything, but it was clear that he was angry. I felt sorry for Mindy. Mark started yelling at her right there in front of everyone. Meredith's husband was in the toilet. By the time he came out, everything had turned into chaos. Alicia thought about the newlyweds. They were supposed to go to Hawaii for their honeymoon. What about Aaron and Wendy? She asked. Oh God, I don't know. I thought their parents would start fighting. I didn't hear it, but I think Aaron's dad called Wendy a cheater or something like that. Her father shouted at him. I was sure they would fight. I don't know what will happen to Aaron and Wendy. The last thing I saw was Aaron taking the rings off her finger and her running into one of the other rooms, crying. Her mom was on her way there to be with her when I left. God, what a nightmare, Alicia expressed. Yes, Vanessa agreed. It was all just supposed to be for fun. She remembered the party for a moment. I think we really went a little overboard, she said, more to herself than to Alicia. Girls, can I see you both in my office, please? Alicia and Vanessa looked up at the same time and were surprised to see Mr. Johnson, the boss, inviting them. They were a little nervous, but had no choice. Sit down, lady, he said, pointing to a pair of leather chairs in front of his desk. Now I want to know what's going on. Of the seven secretaries, only you two bothered to come today. Did the others go on strike? The girls looked at each other. Vanessa had more experience, so she spoke first. No, sir, nothing of the kind. It's well, there were problems at Wendy's wedding. What problems? Um, well this. This isn't work-related. Yeah, if it's not work-related, then why didn't anyone else come? Wendy took two weeks off for her honeymoon. I had to hire a temporary worker for her. But unless anyone forgot to tell me, everyone else should have been here this morning. 
Alicia realized that Mr. Johnson would not stop questioning until he found out why none of the other secretaries came. We threw Wendy a bachelorette party a few weeks ago. Things got out of control and our husbands saw the footage at the wedding. Everyone is really angry, she told him. I see, he sighed. Vanessa, since you've been here the longest, you'll be my secretary until Sylvia returns if that ever happens, he added. Your first duty is to contact the temporary service we use and find us more secretaries immediately. You must find the number in Sylvia's file. Wendy's temporary worker should be here any minute. Arrange it first, then come back here so we can discuss everything. Alicia, you will continue to work with Tom. Yes, sir, she replied. Dexter had a rough weekend, too. He slept about as much as his wife. He wanted to believe her when she said it was just one time, but how can you force yourself to believe in something you don't believe in? To be honest, he didn't know what to believe. He never thought Alicia would cheat on him, but now that he knew she did, he couldn't stop thinking about how much free time she had. She was never intrusive. She always seemed like an understanding wife when he had to stay late at work or go away on night shoots. He had always thought of her as patient and understanding, but now, looking back, he wondered if she was using this time to meet other men. Maybe that's why she was so understanding. This terrible feeling is doubtful. Once it appears, it is almost impossible to get rid of it. As soon as his assistant Cindy walked in on Monday morning, she immediately knew something was wrong. Her boss didn't have that big smile and cheerful mood that he usually had. She didn't want to pry into other people's affairs, so she didn't say anything. Dexter focused on what needed to be done, and it turned out to be a productive day. But as soon as he finished, thoughts about his marital problems flooded him again. He also needed to decide something about his place of residence. The studio had a shower in the dressing room, as well as a microwave and coffee maker but he slept on a couch he bought as a prop for a series of underwear shots taken a few months ago. It worked well as a prop, but was far from comfortable for sleeping. All Monday night, Alicia waited anxiously for a call from Dexter. She was almost going crazy with worry. At least a dozen times she started to dial his number, but stopped herself. When he didn't call by midnight, she went to bed and fell asleep crying. The next day, Mr. Johnson called Vanessa into his office and told her that both Mindy and Vicky had called and said they would be at work on Wednesday. He also reported that Sylvia called and said that her husband would no longer allow her to work there. She officially quit. So far he hadn't heard anything from Meredith and assumed that Wendy was on her honeymoon and would be back in two weeks. Vanessa doubted it, but hoped it was true. As soon as Vanessa left the boss's office, she immediately ran to Alicia with the news. Later that night, Alicia's heart almost stopped when Dexter called to say that he had moved into a motel and was going to pick up more things. She took this as the beginning of the end of their marriage. First, she threw herself on the bed and started crying again. She really loved Dexter. She liked his passion and positive outlook on life. She loved his sense of humor and how he could always make her laugh even when she didn't want to. She loved the way his mouth turned up at the corners when he smiled, and she adored the love she saw in his eyes every time he looked at her. She couldn't imagine her life without him. I have to do something, she told herself, and lying around complaining about my fate won't change anything. She needed to fight, fight for her marriage, fight for her man. Somehow she had to convince him that she had never cheated on him before that party this would at least be a start. She quickly showered, put on casual clothes, and had just finished applying light makeup when the doorbell rang. This is still your home, Dexter. Why are you ringing the bell? I don't know, it just doesn't seem right to just walk in, he replied. He headed for the stairs, but Alicia had her own plan. She was losing him, and it was obvious. She was desperate and willing to take a risk, a big risk. Dexter, before you do that, can we talk? He hesitated a bit before answering. Let me get my things, then I'll come and talk. She had made coffee for both of them when he returned downstairs. Dexter sat down at the kitchen table and took a sip of his black drink. He really had nothing more to say. He already said everything earlier. 
Now it was just a matter of making a decision, in his opinion. Dex, at the reception I heard you tell Manny to send you a copy of that video. Did he do that? Yes, it's in my inbox. Have you watched it yet? She asked. No, I don't really need to see any more. I've seen enough already. Alicia remembered the first time the dancer approached her. She hoped the video captured her reaction. Damn it, he'd already seen the worst part of what she had to lose. Dexter, I want you to watch it from the beginning. For what? You haven't seen all the videos. I only saw a few seconds of the recording. Sylvia had it at lunch that Monday, but I was too embarrassed to look. You said you thought I cheated on you before because I didn't hesitate, but that's not true. I remember the first time he approached me. I was the last one. I know it's not a lot, but I hesitated. I hope you see it on video. Dexter took a deep breath and exhaled heavily. I don't know, Alicia. I really don't want to watch this. You should watch this, Dexter. You really have to see everything. At the end, you will notice that I am no longer in the chair. It's because I ran to the bathroom. This is not what I wanted. I cried while I washed it off. This was the first and only time I've ever done something like this, Dexter. I stopped at a restaurant before returning home that night so my eyes wouldn't be red when you saw me. The party actually ended before 10, but if you remember, I didn't get home until midnight. I don't know, he said again, standing up. I just never thought that you would cheat on me, Fox. I never thought. His thoughts were all mixed up. He didn't know what he wanted to say. I have to go, he said, heading into the living room. I'll think about watching the video, but I can't promise anything, Liz. I, I just don't know if I can ever trust you again. I just do not know. These were the last words before he took his things and left. They didn't sound very reassuring to Alicia. She wanted to cry again, but she was determined to stay strong from now on. On Wednesday, of course, Mindy and Vicky were sitting at their desks when Alicia arrived at work. They were already busy trying to catch up, so she didn't try to talk to them. There will be time for this later. Because of the temporary workers, everyone was behind on work. With them there, hopefully they'll catch up by the end of the day. Wednesday was a slow day for Dexter. He didn't have any filming scheduled, but he needed to make a few edits. However, there was not enough work for him and Cindy, so at 10 o'clock he gave her the rest of the day. He also wished he could take a day off, but he couldn't. He had at least three to four hours of editing and retouching work to do. Sitting at the computer, the thought of Alicia's request came to him again. He really didn't want to see his wife satisfying this guy again. It broke his heart the first time. He didn't see how watching more would help. He loaded the images from his latest mission into the software and began reviewing them. This was the easy part of the job. He had a little over 300 photographs. Many of them were almost identical, differing only in the model's facial expression or a slight turn of the head. Of these, he will select about a hundred for more careful consideration. They will be reduced to 30 or 40, which will then be transferred to another program for light retouching. They will then be uploaded to a private website that only the client will have access to. The client will select four or five images that will receive the royal treatment, undergo final retouching, and be suitable for publication in the magazine. The problem was that he couldn't concentrate. His thoughts kept returning to the video. He had very vivid memories of what he had seen, and he wasn't sure if he wanted to see more. I didn't really want to, but... If there was any chance that there was anything on that tape that would convince him that this was the first and only time, then it would be worth enduring the pain of watching. At least, at least, so he hoped. Dexter went to his email. There it was, in bold, as if challenging him to open it. His hand tensed, and he forced her to move. A couple of mouse clicks, and the video starts. At first it simply showed various women arriving. His wife looked beautiful as the others greeted her. Apparently Sylvia didn't just leave the camera on because the next thing he saw was all the girls sitting around telling jokes. Dexter wasn't in the mood to laugh, so he scrolled through the video on the timeline at the bottom of the screen until he saw the dancer. He was not naive, he remembered his friend's bachelor party, which he attended. 
they actually went to a nightclub and had a party there. He remembered guys making a fuss when dancers tried to raise their testosterone levels, but none of the guys ever touched the girls, and compared to the girls on the tape, the guys behaved very well. These girls have already started acting wild, but the guy has just started. Dexter could almost smell the female pheromones through the computer screen. Dexter decided he needed a break and pressed pause. He stood up for a cup of coffee, but his stomach growled. A quick glance at the clock showed that it was already past noon. He welcomed this respite and decided to take a long break. There was a Denny's restaurant nearby. At lunchtime it filled faster than a barrel under a waterfall, but it was after one and the place was almost empty when he entered. He was in no hurry to return, so after lunch he sat and meditated over a cup of coffee. He really missed Alicia. The only thing he hated more than crawling into an empty bed at night was waking up in it in the morning. When he thought about the recording, he suddenly became impatient to go back and watch more. He hoped to see what Alicia wanted to show him. He could perhaps forgive her if he was sure that this was her only time. God, I hope there is something there that will convince me of this, he prayed to himself. He needed something to clear his doubts. Returning to his desk, Dexter played the tape again skipping over scenes of other women showing off their skills, but stopped when he saw Alicia. He watched carefully as her expression showed her hesitation at the moment of truth. Yes, he could see it. It seemed like she was really going to refuse, then he heard one of the other women challenge her to accept everything. The others laughed at her, and he heard someone else say that he would show him how it was done. He saw what she wanted to show him, and yes, there was a small spark of hope but he also saw tears for the first time. She may have been indecisive, but no one forced her to do it. There was a lot to think about, but he had seen enough. He turned off the video as more tears rolled down his cheeks. He stood up and went to the bathroom to wash his face before returning to work. On Thursday morning, Mr. Kez Johnson called Vanessa into his office. As you can guess, I was trying to contact the other secretaries to figure out what was going on. You know, of course, that Sylvia quit, but I hadn't heard from Meredith, and I wasn't sure if Wendy had gone on her honeymoon, he said. He has a gloomy face. I have no idea what happened at that wedding, but I finally got through to Aaron. He answered when I called the home number I had for Wendy. Apparently, they lived in the same apartment. He said he hadn't seen her since the wedding, but knew she was staying with her parents. I don't have their number listed as an emergency contact on her job application, and he hung up before I could ask for their number. Do you know him? No, Mr. Johnson, I don't, Vanessa replied. Okay, since I can't reach her and she hasn't called me, she's obviously not very interested in keeping her job. I want you to call HR and ask them to post our regular ad for a new secretary. Yes, sir, she answered sadly also finally managed to talk to Meredith. She'll be back on Monday. Make sure the temp agency knows about this, please. Vanessa confirmed that she would take care of it, but before making any calls, she needed to break the news to Alicia. Meredith will be back on Monday, she announced. She'll be back. How do you know? Mr. Johnson spoke to her. He also spoke to Aaron. Aaron? Alicia gasped. Somehow. That is. He called their apartment and Aaron answered. He said Wendy was staying with her parents. Mr. Gow Johnson had HR put out an ad for a replacement, Vanessa said. They obviously didn't even go on their honeymoon. God, she must be terrified. Yes, Alicia agreed, but imagine how horrified Aaron was watching her satisfy that guy. Yeah, I know. I've talked to the other girls before. Vicky's husband still won't talk to her, and Mindy hasn't seen Mark since that night. She's very scared. She said she's never seen him this angry. He didn't hit her, did he? asked Alicia. No, I don't think so. She would tell me if that happened. She prays he'll calm down, but she doesn't think that will happen. She thinks he'll want a divorce. Alicia didn't say anything. She remembered her situation. Vanessa guessed what she was thinking. What about Dexter? Any news? Not really, she sighed in response. He picked up another load of clothes last week. 
He was staying at a motel, not a studio. I don't know what I'll do if he wants a divorce, Vanessa. What about counseling? Would he agree to that? I don't know, she admitted. I don't know if it would do any good, but I could try, I guess. It wouldn't do any harm. That evening, Alicia wondered if Dexter would be open to couples therapy. She hadn't heard from him and wasn't sure if he had watched part of the video yet or not. She decided to wait until the weekend and see if he would call her first. On Friday afternoon, the girls were all shocked when they saw Sylvia enter. Alicia was the first to react. I thought you quit. Her tone was unfriendly. Sylvia noticed this and responded awkwardly. Yes, I just stopped by to pick up a few personal items and Mr. Johnson said I could pick up my check today instead of waiting for it in the mail. She hoped for friendly faces, but saw none. I, I'm so sorry, girls. I was really going to delete that video, but I completely forgot about it. I didn't even know Manny took my phone until he started screaming in the reception area. I'm so sorry. Yes, they got caught because of the video, but everyone knew they did something wrong. Sylvia's apology softened several sentiments. How's Manny taking it? asked Vicky. Not very good. It's not my idea to quit. He's forcing me to do it. I'm also sleeping in the guest room. He's not thinking about divorce yet, thank God. He started talking about going to a counselor, so I think we'll go to therapy. Is it true? Alicia asked. Do you know a good consultant? Yeah, one of the guys Manny works with recommended someone. It's a woman. She's supposed to be very nice. Why? Do you want her number? Yes, do you have it? No, not on me, but I have some at home. I'll call later and give it to you. What about the others? Sylvia asked, looking around. Everyone agreed that it couldn't hurt to have a number. After talking with the boss, Vanessa was curious. Have you heard anything about Wendy? No, but I heard from Katie Henderson. She was one of the bridesmaids. That Monday after the wedding, Aaron went to a lawyer to get the marriage annulled. Oh, damn, Vicky commented. Yes, I think Wendy is staying with her parents. It's unlikely she'll go back to work. Yes, Mr. Johnson has already posted an ad for a replacement, Vanessa said. Well, Sylvia said regretfully, Mr. Johnson said he cleared my desk and everything is in HR, so I better go. She lowered her head. I'm really, really sorry for all the pain I caused. We all got carried away that night. We shouldn't have done what we did. It was stupid. I was the stupidest of them all, recording it and then leaving the phone. It's, it ruined lives. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, she said again. She had tears in her eyes when she left. Before everyone got ready to leave that day, Sylvia called Alicia with the therapist's number and asked her to pass it on to the others. This was the last time they spoke to each other. Alicia's weekend was the worst. At least she had a job during the week to take her mind off things during the day. When she was alone at home, she only thought about what Dexter was doing or thinking had he contacted a lawyer. If so, what will she do fight the divorce, try to get him to stay with her? What would be the point of this? No, she screwed up. If he wants a divorce, she will agree to whatever he thinks is fair. But, but how will she live without him? Despite her determination to remain strong through the ordeal, she could not hold back her tears as she thought about life without him. Dexter also thought a lot this morning. He spent a sleepless night and went to the waterfront to watch the sun rise over Lake Michigan. Vivid shades of orange and red danced on the waves like brightly colored fairies from a childhood dream. A beautiful, warm glow enveloped the tall buildings in the city center and shimmered off the reflective glass surfaces. Dexter loved this city. He was warm and friendly, full of life and excitement. But will he be the same without Alicia, or will the city he loved become cold and empty? It had been a week since he left, and he still didn't know what to do. Maybe if he talked to her, really talked face to face, he could see if she was being sincere that this was the only time. Alicia was cleaning up. It was the only thing she could think of to take her mind off her marriage problems. If he doesn't call before six, she'll call him herself. In the meantime, she needed something to do. Vacuuming and dusting seemed like a good idea. 
She was about to take a break when the phone rang. Hello, it's me. Her heart skipped a beat when she heard it. Hello. There was hope in her voice, but also fear. He could call to say that everything is forgiven and he is returning home, or he could say that he is filing for divorce. She held her breath and let him speak. Will you be home in an hour? I want to come and talk. Yeah, sure. I'm just doing a little cleaning. How about I make us lunch? Yes, okay, he replied. See you in a bit. Okay, she answered quickly. Oh, and Dexter. Yes. Just come in. It's still your home. Okay, see you soon, he said and hung up. Then Alicia realized what she looked like and quickly went to the shower. When Dexter walked through the door, she was fresh, clean, well-dressed, and lightly scented with his favorite perfume. Not that he really noticed, he had other thoughts. She poured coffee and they sat down to dinner. There was little conversation until they finished. Alicia was on pins and needles. She also had something she wanted to talk about, but she would wait for him to speak first. I watched the video, at least part of it, enough to see that you really looked like you didn't know what to do until this guy took matters into his own hands. I, I can only imagine how hard it was to watch. I know you had to force yourself to watch it, and you have no idea how much I appreciate it. I'm so sorry I did that. I have no excuses. Dexter, I. She needed to catch her breath before she could continue. I cheated on you, but I swear that was the only time. She could literally see the doubts he still had. Are you sorry you did it, or are you sorry you got caught? He asked. No, no, I regret letting this happen. I knew better. I wasn't wrong about what I was doing. I knew I was cheating on you. I didn't mean to do it consciously. I, I just got caught up in all the fuss. And when the situation arose, I gave in. The only thing I regret about getting caught is that it hurts you. That phrase, I gave in, reminded him of all the times he was tempted but didn't give in. He was unaware of his expression as he wondered why his wife was not as resilient as he was. Did that mean she didn't love him as much as he loved her? Alicia could see the internal struggle on his face. She was sure that she would lose him without professional help. Dexter, would you agree to go to couples therapy with me? He thought for just a second. I don't know, what's the use of that? Dexter, I broke your heart, and I don't know how to put it back together. Or if it's even possible. I don't know, but I want to try, and I need someone trained to help. Please, she begged. I have the name of a therapist who is said to be very good. Please let me make an appointment. He didn't see how the therapist could calm him down if his wife couldn't, but if it was possible. Okay, he replied, but call me and tell me what times and dates are available before you make an exact appointment. I will, she said with some relief and hope. On Monday morning, when Meredith returned to work, it seemed like the old team was almost at full strength, so the five of them went to lunch together. It was the first time they had gone out together since their wedding. But it wasn't like before. There were no jokes, no laughter, not even sarcastic remarks. It was more like a support group. Once everyone was seated, Meredith started talking. She was outside the circle and knew nothing about what was happening. So, whose marriages survived? No, Mindy replied. Well, I'm not sure. I haven't heard from Mark since that night, but I think he'll ask for a divorce. Meredith was surprised and felt awkward asking such a question. Really? God, I, I'm sorry. I knew our husbands were angry, but I didn't think anyone would get a divorce. What? She was almost afraid to ask. What about the others? We all have problems, Alicia volunteered. I still don't know what's going to happen. Dexter is living in a motel. We talked over the weekend, and he agreed to couples therapy, so I'm still hopeful. Oh God, Liz, I'm so sorry. Meredith began to realize how devastating the situation was. What about you? Vicky asked, interfering in the conversation. Meredith's expression changed. Well, it's no secret that I have long suspected David of cheating. That night, after the wedding, he confessed. He admitted, Vanessa exclaimed. Meredith nodded her head slowly. 
Yeah, well, not right away. He started yelling at me as soon as we got in the car. Finally, when we got home, I was just so tired of it that I yelled back and asked, What about you? How many women are there? Did you get laid? I never had the courage to accuse him of anything before, so at first he was surprised. Then he got a guilty look on his face. Of course, Mindy put in, he knew he was caught. Yeah, he didn't even try to deny it. He asked how long I knew, and I said a long time. Then he asked why I never talked about it. What did you say? asked Alicia. I said I never told him because I still loved him and asked if he loved me. He said he did. We talked all night. I asked if he wanted freedom, if he wanted a divorce, but he said no. We both started crying and decided that we would try to repair our marriage. Vicky was the first to congratulate her, followed by the others. By the end of dinner, they were all aware of each other's marital problems. Two days later, Alicia called Dexter and offered three possible times and dates for his counseling appointment. She explained that the therapist wanted to spend an hour with each of them individually at first. She had already scheduled her appointment, so Dexter chose one of the suggested times and Alicia booked it. Dexter had no idea what to expect. He has never been to any therapist. Will there be his and her sofas there, he thought with a smile. When he got out of the car, a 77 was flying over the building. He looked up. It was huge and so close that he could almost count the rivets on its belly. He watched it cut through the sky, fly over the O'Hare fence and land on the runway. He waited until a small cloud of smoke indicated that he had landed safely before turning and entering the building. Inside, he looked at the handwritten room number and headed towards number 319. The first thing he noticed was a carved wooden sign on the wall of the small reception area. The perfect marriage is two imperfect people who refuse to give in to each other. It was a pleasant statement and made him smile. Yes, sir, may I help you? asked the receptionist. Uh, yeah, I'm Dexter Samuelson. I have an appointment. Of course, Mr. T Samuelson, let me let her know you're here. The young brunette pressed a button and announced his arrival. He heard the doctor's voice telling her to let him through. The doctor's name was Mrs. Angela Lindstrom. She was a rather simple woman in her early thirties. Dexter didn't like her way of communicating, but she seemed to know her stuff. At least the questions she asked were pointed and aimed at his problems. After the first hour, he may not have liked her, but he respected her. The second week was their first session together. Both knew it wouldn't be a walk in the park, but neither was prepared for Dr. Des Lindstrom's unconventional methods. She leaned back confidently in the leather chair. Mrs. Samuelson, you told me about your feelings in this situation, which you did not express to Mr. Samuelson because you thought it sounded selfish. I want you to tell him about those feelings now. Alicia was taken by surprise. Doctor, I told you this in confidence. I, I can't tell him this. It sounds terrible. I shouldn't even tell you this, she cried. Mrs. Samuelson, these are your feelings. The first thing you two need to do is open your hearts to each other. If you are not ready for this, then it will be a waste of time. Alicia couldn't look at him. She couldn't look him in the eye and say it, so she lowered her head and spoke quietly. I, ah, uh, well, I, my, ah, uh, she sighed and exhaled. You hurt my feelings. I know how that sounds after what I did but it's the truth. I love you. I know I screwed up, but I can't believe you think I cheated on you before. Emotions were already overwhelming her. They hadn't been there even ten minutes, and her eyes were already filled with tears. Are you kidding? Did I hurt your feelings? Well, forgive me for everything. God, you tore my heart out, and I hurt your feelings. He was almost ready to give up and forget about therapy and marriage. But Dr. Betty's Lindstrom anticipated his reaction and encouraged him to continue. Why don't you believe her when she says it was the only time? Because it's not only cheating, that's bad enough in itself, but she was sneaky dishonest. She knew this guy would be there. You should have seen the way she was dressed that night. She knew full well that they hired a stripper. Yeah, Alicia cried. I knew he'd be there but I had no idea it would go that far. 
I thought he'd strip down to his swim trunks or something. We'd put dollar bills in his belt. And that's all. If I knew what would happen, I would never have gone to this stupid party, she screamed, starting to sob. Why didn't you tell me about him before you left? Why such secrecy? She was still crying, but she answered through her tears. I don't know, I... I guess I didn't want you to get the wrong idea. Misunderstood? You cheated on me. You mean, got it right. You went behind my back, Alicia. Now I wonder how many times have you done this. I only know about it because your stupid friend left a video. How many times have you done something like that and not gotten caught? Alicia finally began to realize the full consequences of her action, not only the betrayal, but also the dishonesty before and after. Alicia, under the circumstances, I could forgive a one-time mistake. If you had told me about the dancer right away and then admitted what happened when you got home that night, it would have been a different matter. But the secrecy, deceit, and reluctance to take responsibility for what you did makes me think this has happened before. But can't. Can't you give me a chance? After all these years, don't I deserve it? Alicia, I can't lie to myself. I can't convince myself to believe in something I don't believe in. I've always considered you an honest man, a man with dignity, a man who would never cheat on me. But you showed me that I was wrong. Not only did you cheat, but you were dishonest. So now I'm wondering how long I've been wrong. Tears were almost streaming from her eyes. Her voice was weak. So there's no hope, right? How can I convince you? I, I can't, can I? For several minutes, the only sound in the doctor's office was Alicia's sobs. Yes, Mrs. Samuelson, there is hope. If it weren't for it, we wouldn't be sitting here. Mr. Samuelson, your wife, and I discussed something during her first visit. My colleagues think my approach is very radical, but I have achieved great results. Good luck with him. I discussed this with Mrs. Samuelson first because I needed to know how far she was willing to go to save her marriage, and I can tell she didn't even blink. It's not a quick fix. It doesn't happen. But if you stick with it, it can help restore your faith and trust in your wife in the long run. This sounded quite ominous to Dexter. What was she going to offer? An iron chastity belt. The first thing I want you to do is come home. She saw his look and immediately went into an explanation to prevent his objections. Mr. Samuelson, we need to restore some trust in your relationship. We can't do that if you sit in a motel room and wonder what your wife is doing, where she is, and who she is with. You need to know where she is, and to that's why you need to be at home. He didn't particularly like it, but it sounded logical. This brings us to the second part of the program, she continued turning to Dexter. You will also go to the bank and remove your wife's name from all accounts and credit cards. You will sit down together and determine the minimum amount of money she needs for gas, food and other small items and give it to her in the form of a weekly allowance. You will activate the GPS on her phone so you can track her location at any time of the day or night. Every day after work, she will give you a phone with a saved history so you can see who she communicated with during the day. Oh, that's ridiculous, Dexter said. I don't have to do all these things. Mr. T.C. Samuelson, you can keep coming here where we'll work on trust issues and maybe make some progress. But as soon as she stays 20 minutes late, you'll be back to wondering where she's been and we'll be back to square one. He looked at his crying wife. And is that okay with you? She simply nodded wiping her nose with a handkerchief. He thought about it and reluctantly agreed. Okay, let's try. The next day was Friday. Although he paid for the room until Sunday, Dexter packed his bags in the morning and headed home after work. When he entered, he immediately smelled a pleasant smell from the kitchen. As he entered, something on the table caught his attention. It was Alicia's wallet and phone. There was also a detailed list of all her expenses, including her morning cup of coffee from Starbucks and her hair appointment every couple of weeks. Hello, she said, greeting him in a simple house dress. Although she didn't try to seduce him, he thought that would be the worst move for her. Something smells delicious. I stopped at that little fish store on the way home and bought Red Snapper. 
I cook it with almond sauce. It'll be ready in 30 minutes. What is all this? He asked, pointing to the things on the table. I thought we could discuss this after dinner, she replied. You really want to do this? It's like you're on parole and I'm your inspector. That's right, I'm on parole, Dex. I committed a crime, I have to be punished, no matter how long it takes. No matter how long it takes for you to trust me again, she said. If I could only convince you that I have been a faithful, devoted wife all these years and ask for forgiveness for one of my sins, but I can't. You made that pretty clear in the doctor's office, and you're right. I understand why. You have so many doubts, and I don't blame you. That's why this seems like the next best step. We'll see, he muttered, turning around. I'm going to go take a shower, he said as he left. After a month of eating out, Dexter began to appreciate his wife's cooking skills again. The red snapper was delicious. After dinner, he and Alicia discussed the program outlined by the doctor. They found a GPS app for her phone that not only showed her location, but also stored a history by date. He liked this application. He obviously didn't intend to spend the entire day tracking her every move, but he could see where she was if he wanted. They worked out a weekly budget that still allowed her to go out to dinner, but the gas money was based on her gas mileage. She had enough money for gas to drive to work and to the store a couple times a week. That's all. Instead of removing her name from the credit cards, he simply collected all the plastic cards she carried. I'll put it in a safe deposit box. So if anything happens to me, you'll still have access to the money, he said. This was so typical of him. Silently, she sat and wondered why she didn't put him first like he always did for her. He always put her interests above his own even now. She remembered that damn party. If she didn't consider her friends more important than her own husband, she would never have caused him such pain. She sighed internally. There was nothing to be done now. Nothing other than try to regain his trust. They discussed everything except sleeping arrangements. I, uh, I moved all my stuff into the other bedroom. She hoped that he would object and say that they would sleep together, but this did not happen. A flat-sounding, okay, was his only comment. I thought you'd want this, but if you'd rather sleep together, I'd... No, that's better, he said, not even letting her finish. She expected him to say this, but it still hurt to hear it. I have a couple hours of editing work to do, so is there anything else we haven't discussed? No, she replied. I think we're all done. Okay, then I'll be in the office. If you remember anything, let me know. And with these words, he stood up from the table and disappeared around the corner. Alicia went into the living room and curled up with a book. If she strained too hard, she could hear him working in the other room. Even with all their problems, it was good just to know he was back in the house. She felt safe when he was around. On weekends, they lived like housemates, nothing more. On Monday morning, Alicia was sitting at her desk when Vanessa walked in. One look, and she knew something was clearly wrong. It was obvious that she was crying. In fact, she was still sobbing as she passed by. Vanessa, what happened? Oh, Liz, she sobbed. Terry wants a divorce. What? Why? He, he knows. He knows about that party. How? He wasn't even at the reception. How did he know? Asked Alicia. Mindy's husband, Mark, he's crazy. He's suing the dancer and the company he worked for. I was called to testify, she said, starting to cry again. Terry was at home on Friday when I received the summons. He started asking questions, and when I couldn't answer, he got angry and started making calls. She wiped her eyes again. By this time, she already had a small audience of other secretaries. I don't know who he called, but by Sunday, he had a copy of that damn video. She was sobbing and trying to catch her breath. I, I looked like such a damn bitch. She sobbed. Sorry, Mindy said, apologizing for her husband. I knew Mark was going against the dancer, but I never thought it would affect you. Now what's going on? It was Mr. Tertiu Johnson. He looked at Vanessa and saw that she was crying, but it was becoming increasingly difficult for him to sympathize. He had a business to run, 
and for the past month his secretaries had had one disaster after another. His patience was running out. I am sorry, Mr. Bridges Johnson, Vanessa muttered. I'll be fine, girls, she said, turning back to her friends. Come on, we all have work to do. Mr. Getty did Johnson turned and walked back to his office as the girls went to their places. He had no intention of interfering with his employees' problems, but something had to be done. They didn't know it yet, but this was the last day they could all discuss their problems over lunch. At about three o'clock, Mr. Kai Johnson called everyone to a meeting. Once everyone had gathered, he set new rules. From now on, he informed them, lunch breaks would alternate every 15 minutes, starting at 11.30. He left it up to the girls to decide who would go when. Later in the week, Alicia and Dexter had a second therapy session with Dr. Tegensu Lindstrom. She asked the couple if they followed her recommendations, and they said yes. Last week was an eye-opener for Alicia. In her mind, she knew that, other than that party, she was a faithful and devoted wife, so it really hurt her to know that Dexter suspected otherwise. After hearing her husband's rationalizations in the previous session, she completely understood him and did not blame him for feeling the way he did. As long as those doubts were present, she didn't see how he could trust her again, even with Dr. Lindstrom's help. For the next few weeks, life seemed like an existence in a fog. Alicia's life at home hasn't changed since Dexter's return. Every day she put the phone on the table so he could check it when he got home. Sometimes he did it, sometimes he didn't. During all this time, they never made love or had any sexual contact. He never kissed her or even told her that he loved her. He was no longer the man she married. He never returned home smiling and in a good mood like before. His lips rarely moved upward, and she saw only sadness in his eyes. She knew that this must have affected his professional life as well as his personal life, but he didn't tell her about work anymore. She missed the stories he told about how things went wrong on set. Somehow he always made them funny. It was the same at work. The boss's new rules not only disrupted their lunch breaks, but also showed them that he was tired of all the drama in the office, and they knew that he had no qualms about firing people. Everyone began to pull away and keep their marriage problems to themselves, even though they were all in it together. Alicia found it difficult to know whether her sessions with Dr. Sainz Lindstrom were actually helping. She was grateful that Dexter was back home, but she had doubts about whether he still loved her. It took her a while to work up the courage to ask, and she thought she might need support when she did, so she waited until their fifth therapy session. Dexter, she said, taking a deep breath and looking at him. Do you still love me? The doctor sat quietly in her chair and waited with Alicia for his answer. You don't think I still love you? He flared up. I, I'm asking. Since you came home, we barely talk, and you, you don't say it anymore. You never say you love me. Do you think I would do all this if I didn't love you? He asked. Mr. Samuelson, Dr. Lindstrom interrupted. It was a direct question, and it deserved a direct and honest answer. He looked into the troubled face of the woman who had betrayed him and gave the only answer he could. Yes, yes, of course I still love you, but I know one has ever hurt me like this, and I just don't know how to deal with it. Earlier that day, Alicia had thought about giving up, but his answer gave her new hope. As long as he still answered yes to her question, she would never give up. On the car ride home that night, she had an idea, but in the current climate, it was impossible. How, she had to think about that. The next morning was the end of the work week. When Alicia entered the office, her eyes met Vanessa's. They were red again. As she wondered what new fate had befallen her friend, Vanessa stood up and walked over. Can, can you talk to me for a few minutes, Liz? I'm so scared. Alicia's eyes darted to Mr. Johnson's door to make sure he wasn't looking. Don't worry, Mr. Q. Johnson left for a meeting before 11, Vanessa said. Okay, Alicia replied. Let's go to the break room. They both took a cup of bad coffee from the machine and sat down at the small round table. Tears began to form in Vanessa's eyes. She took a deep breath and began to speak in a voice hoarse from crying. Liz, I'm so scared. I've never lived alone, 
and now I'm faced with being a single mother with two small dependent children. I do not know what to do. Did he really say he was getting a divorce? Maybe it's not too late. She noticed that her friend was slowly nodding her head. Oh yes, he's already started everything, she replied. He moved out and rented an apartment. He has a lawyer and everything. Yesterday I received the papers. Alicia reached out and took her hand. I'm so sorry, she said, trying to console her friend. He will probably have to pay alimony and child support. No child support, she told Alicia. I will receive child support, but the most I can get in this state is 25% of his gross income. I found this on the internet. This is the maximum, even with two children. That's a little over $350 a week. She pulled a napkin from the holder on the table and wiped her eyes. It covers the mortgage, but not much else. I'm not sure I can keep the house. Why no alimony? He earns much more than you. He doesn't offer any. I guess I could hire my own lawyer and fight him, but then I'd have to pay a lawyer. And they're not cheap, Liz. I called my brother to see what he thought, but he wasn't too happy either. He said that I could spend more on a lawyer than I would receive in alimony. She wiped her eyes again and continued. I, I think I'll just take what he offers. She closed her eyes as if she were praying. I just want him to come home, Liz. I know, honey, Alicia said, squeezing her hand in support. How? How do you and Dexter get along? Vanessa sobbed. I don't know it was hard. The therapist we see has a specific program that we follow, but I'm not sure it really helps. I think you just need to give it time. I've read that healing a relationship after something like this can take years, so if it takes that long, I'm willing to wait. I just want my old Dexter back. I don't think I've ever heard him laugh since I found out. Not even once. They talked a little more, but had to get back to work. Alicia had been thinking a lot about the idea she had in the car that night and had pretty much thought of everything, except for one big exception, that damn GPS. She couldn't tell Dexter what she was planning, and she had no idea how many times a day he checked her location, if at all. She just had to take a calculated risk. That night, as soon as she got home, Alicia ran to his office and checked her husband's work schedule. Next week, he will be very busy on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with a major shoot. He will be in the studio for some time, but there will also be three location shoots. This was perfect, she thought. Most likely, he will be so busy that he will not have time to check my GPS. The weekend passed quietly, like all recent ones. Early Monday morning, Alicia stood at her dresser and closed her purse with great sadness. She took a deep breath and strengthened her resolve, knowing that this was the only way out. As soon as the chaos of Monday morning died down at work, she asked to speak with Mr. D Johnson. Mr. D Johnson, I... I know I shouldn't ask, and believe me, if it weren't so important, I wouldn't, but... Well, sir, I have to leave work tomorrow afternoon. Mr. Bade Johnson just looked at her and sighed. Tell me, Mrs. Samuelson, what can I do to stop this from happening again? Sir? Well, after Wendy's wedding, I had seven good, dedicated, hard-working secretaries. Two have since left, and the rest seem to move from one crisis to another all the time. So, I would like to know what I can do to make sure this never happens again, he said with authority. Alicia started to get nervous. It seemed that she would be denied time off. She wondered what she would do if this happened. She knew she might have to quit. Now it started to seem possible. However, she didn't panic yet. I don't think there's anything you could have done, Mr. Johnson, but don't worry, it won't happen again. It's unlikely that you will find seven more women as stupid as us, she complained. I understand, he replied. This time off you need, does it have anything to do with what happened at the wedding? Alicia learned a lesson about honesty and openness. Yes, sir. I was just as stupid as everyone else. As a result, I am fighting for my marriage. He stared at her for a few seconds before asking, Do you need all day? Alicia has hope. I, I'm not sure, she answered honestly. I have an appointment downtown for an hour, 
but I don't know how long it will take. If I have time, I'll be back before the end of the day. Okay, he said. Just try to get as much done as you can in the morning. Yes, sir. I'll make sure everything is done before I leave. And thank you, sir. He looked at her a little thoughtfully. My wife and I will be celebrating our 40th anniversary this year. We've both made mistakes, not the ones you're talking about, but let's just say things weren't always smooth sailing. However, after all the ups and downs, we are still together and still love each other very much. I wish everyone could have what we have after 40 years. Maybe this is your chance for such happiness. If so, I don't want to be the one who gets in your way. Alicia had tears of gratitude in her eyes as she thanked him again and left. She had to skip lunch at noon. She wondered if Dexter was following her as she drove through the city. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she felt the sadness of her mission. When she returned home that night, she was on pins and needles, unsure if Dexter was tracking her GPS. When he didn't mention anything before going to bed, a grateful Alicia slid under the sheets with a sigh of relief. Now, if only her luck would last one more day, she thought as she laid her head on the pillow. She considered her husband's schedule for Tuesday. He and Cindy would probably grab a bite to eat at a small diner a block from the studio. They will then pack all of his equipment for the trip, and by 1 p.m. they will head out to meet the client. Years ago, when Dexter couldn't afford an assistant, she would sometimes help him on set. She saw him at work, he was all business. Once he got there and started working, she knew he would never look at the tracking device on his phone. It will be the very last thing he thinks about. The next day, Alicia worked like a slave to make sure everything was done before she left. She stopped by her boss's office on her way out to thank him again. He wished her luck, and she went. Just like the day before, she was nervous. She looked at the car clock and saw that it was only 12.30. She imagined Cindy and Dexter loading his SUV with suitcases containing lighting equipment, light stands, battery packs, cameras, and all the other equipment he takes to filming. She wondered if he would look at the phone before leaving. If so, will he call to find out where she's going or wait until the evening and ask when she'll be back? She did not know. All she could do was wait and watch. Finally, it was all over. Alicia hoped her nervousness about the GPS wouldn't ruin everything, but a preliminary assessment indicated everything should be fine. She felt great relief when she returned to the office at four o'clock. That night, like the night before, Dexter said nothing about her going downtown. For the first time since their wedding, Alicia fell asleep with a smile on her face. This should work was her last thought before drifting off to sleep. On Thursday morning, Alicia was pleased to see a Chicago courier truck pull up to the office. She met the courier at the door and gladly signed for the large envelope he was holding in his hands. Later that evening, her heart was racing as she and Dexter walked into Dr. T Lindstrom's office and took their seats. So, the doctor began, turning to him, how are things going? He took a deep breath before speaking. Don't know. I hate all this tracking of Liz's every move. It's just not me. I don't think I can keep doing this. They didn't talk much, so this was news to both Alicia and the doctor. Tears welled up in her eyes as she realized how important the envelope was in her purse. He seemed ready to give up. This could be her last chance. The doctor started to say something, but Alicia interrupted. Dexter, is it that you can't forgive me for what I did? Or do you still have doubts about whether I cheated on you before? Liz, I have already forgiven you for this. I've watched this damn video several times. I know you drank. I heard the other girls egging you on, chanting and challenging you to do it. I saw how excited they were, and I saw how hesitant you were. But I still wonder if this was the first and only time, Liz, I can't help it. Alicia first took a tissue from her purse and wiped her eyes. Then she reached into her purse again and pulled out an envelope. Here, she said, handing it to him. What is this? Open it, she replied. He read the return address. The company name and logo were printed in the upper left corner. Hamlin Polygraph, did you pass the lie detector? He asked, looking up at his crying wife. She simply nodded her head. 
It's still sealed. You didn't open it. I didn't have to open it, Dexter. I know what it will say, she sobbed. Dexter hesitated. Thoughts raced through my head. Was this what he was waiting for? Proof that this was a one-time event? Or will this be the final nail in the coffin? He looked at Dr. Del Lindstrom as if seeking advice. Well, come on, open it, she told him. He tore the envelope and pulled out the contents. There were several loose pages on top and one long page folded like an accordion. He took the first page in his hands and began to read. According to this operator, the client answered the following questions truthfully and without deception. There were several more legal statements, but he was interested in the first phrase. It was signed by someone named James Uhul, and underneath his name was his license number. Can I take a look, Dr. Lindstrom asked, leaning forward in her chair and extending her hand across the table. Dexter handed over the first page and looked at the second. I know this company, Mr. Samuelson. They are highly regarded as one of the best in the city. Jim Uhul is one of their most experienced operators. Dexter was too busy reading the second page to pay attention to the doctor's words. He recognized the first few questions as so-called basic questions. She was asked things like, Is your married name Alicia Samuelson? Your maiden name is Hackett. She was asked how old she was, and she answered in the negative. She was asked if she lived at their address and asked a few more personal questions. Dexter scrolled through the obvious questions until he found the one he was looking for. Question. Since your marriage, how many men other than your husband have you had sexual relations with? Answer. 1. The word truth was printed next to her answer. This was followed by several of the usual questions until another one came along that caught Dexter's attention. Question. Since your marriage, how many times have you had sexual relations with someone other than your husband? Answer, one. Again, the word truth was next to it. Dexter, reading three pages of questions, noticed that they returned to this basic question again and again, but it was asked in different ways. He reappeared on the next page. Question, before the May 10th incident, had you had any sexual relations with anyone other than your husband since your marriage? Answer, no. Dexter was so engrossed in reading the report that he was completely unaware of what was happening around him. He began to study the actual lie detector sheet, but could not make it out. It didn't matter. This was the proof he was waiting for. He wondered why he didn't think of a lie detector in the beginning. It would certainly have saved both of them a lot of suffering. Then it dawned on him. He looked at his wife with hope in his eyes. It should have cost a couple hundred dollars at least. More like 450, the doctor intervened. He looked at her and then back at his wife. $450? Where did you get the money to pay for this? Alicia looked down at the napkin she now held in her lap. She barely managed to say the words. I, I sold my grandmother's ring, she admitted quietly. Dexter was stunned. Your, oh, Alicia, why, that ring meant everything to you. For what? No, Dexter, the ring meant a lot, but you're the only one who means everything to me, she said. Dexter looked at Dr. Lindstrom's somewhat puzzled face and explained, it was a family heirloom. Her grandmother personally gave it to her just hours before she died. He looked back at Alicia, but still addressed the doctor. She absolutely treasured that ring. Why didn't you just ask me for money? He asked. I... I wasn't sure what you would say. We didn't talk much for a few weeks. I didn't know what you were thinking. I was afraid, afraid that you would say no, and then what would I do? It was my only hope, and I couldn't risk you stopping me somehow, she sobbed. Darling, I wish I had thought about this a long time ago. You should have contacted me. I'm so sorry about the ring. I am very sorry. Alicia felt her heart start beating again after weeks of stagnation. Both she and the doctor understood the term of endearment. It was the first time in a long time that he had called her anything other than her name, and for the first time in weeks there was no anger in his voice. Selling her grandmother's ring was probably the hardest thing she had to do, but if it meant getting her husband back, it would be worth it. Alicia raised the wet wipe to her eyes again 
and wiped away the tears. Please forgive me, Dexter. I'm so sorry I hurt you. Between the video and the lie detector in his hands, Dexter was confident in his decision. We are all human. We all have weaknesses. Sometimes love is not only about never saying sorry, but also about forgiving. Selling her grandmother's ring was the most selfless act of true love he could imagine. Now it was his turn. He stood up from his chair, placed the papers on the corner of Dr. Lindstrom's desk, and walked over to his wife. Alicia saw love and forgiveness in his eyes. On weak knees, she rose to accept his embrace. Oh, my dear, he murmured as they embraced. Alicia wanted to tell him again how sorry she was, but she couldn't say a word between her sobs. She felt his strong hands stroking her back as her body shook with crying. Okay, okay, honey, everything will be okay, he said, trying to comfort her. He pulled away and placed his hands on either side of her face. He gently took her chin and raised her head to kiss her tenderly. I forgive you, darling. He grabbed her chin and lifted her head slightly to kiss her. Just don't ever do that again, he said with a slight smile. Oh, Dexter, she cried, hugging him. I will never hurt you again, never, never, never. Well, I think our session is over, the doctor said. They almost forgot about her. Dexter turned his head towards the smiling doctor. Yes, and I don't think we'll be back again. Dr. Lindstrom simply nodded in approval. On the way out, Dexter remembered the question he wanted to ask before leaving. Doctor, I've never thought about a lie detector, but I would think that in your situation, it would be one of the first things you would recommend. In fact, the doctor said in a serious voice, if your wife had discussed this with me beforehand, I would have talked her out of it. Most people have something to hide. Even if it has nothing to do with cheating or their marriage, psychologically they wonder if a lie detector will reveal their deepest, darkest secrets. As a result, many people become very nervous and fail tests, even if they tell the truth. I've seen it backfire on them too many times. Alicia was still wiping her eyes when she looked at the doctor. Thank you for all your help, Dr. Lindstrom. The doctor smiled widely again. Please, Mrs. Samuelson, I wish you both nothing but happiness. In the car, Alicia tried to apologize again, but Dexter told her, That's enough, honey, enough. From here we pick up the pieces and move on. I won't say it still doesn't hurt, but I know it wasn't intentional, and I now know it was the first and last time. When we get home, you will return your things to the bedroom. Alicia almost couldn't wait for Dexter to open the door before running upstairs and moving her things. It didn't take long. She was almost exhausted from running back and forth when she finished and found her forgiving husband in his office. Still a little apprehensive, she stood in the doorway and asked, Can, can I kiss you? You have to kiss me or the whole deal is off, he joked. For the first time in a long time, she saw his sense of humor. She literally jumped into his lap and wrapped her arms around his neck before kissing him passionately. God, I love you so much, she boasted, pressing her lips to his again. They hadn't even left each other yet when Dexter had already made up his mind editing Be Damned. Come on, he said, standing up and taking her hand. It's time to start picking up those pieces I've been talking about. This time there will be no blindfolds, no role-playing games, no gymnastics in the bedroom. It's time for both to reaffirm their love for each other. When Alicia looked into his eyes, she saw no more anger or pain, only devotion. He leaned down and kissed her very tenderly on the lips. Instinctively, she lifted her chin so he could continue kissing her neck and face. They had gentle sex. As they both tried to regain normal breathing, they hugged silently. They knew that it was all over, the most difficult period of their lives was now in the past. It was official. Over the next week, things started to feel more normal. Cindy immediately noticed a change in her boss. He started having fun again. Dexter had truly forgiven his wife, now she just needed to forgive herself. But still, there was one thing that worried him, one thing that still made him uneasy. Dexter was busy in the studio. He sent Cindy to get props for the upcoming shoot while he worked on a small stage that needed to be prepared for the background. 
He had just hammered in the final nail when he remembered the GPS. He dropped the hammer and took out his phone. Gotcha, he exclaimed out loud. There was not a second to think. He hurried to the desk in his office and wrote a note for Cindy. I'll be back soon, was all it said. He ran out to the car and went to the address he saw on the device. He wasn't sure what he would find when he got there, but he prayed he wouldn't be too late. Happy birthday, honey, Dexter said, handing Alicia a birthday card and kissing her afterwards. Mm. She purred as their lips parted. Thank you, darling. She smiled as she read the card. Her smile grew even wider when she read his handwritten note inside, saying that he was taking her to dinner and dancing. It was a wonderful evening. The dinner was delicious, and Dexter spun the birthday girl around the dance floor until she couldn't dance another step. Later that night, they enjoyed a glass of wine while cuddling in the privacy of their living room. It had been two months since they had last left Dr. Zed Lindstrom's office. It's finally time for Dexter to explain everything. Alicia hugged her husband a little tighter. Thank you, darling. Tonight was perfect. Not really, he replied. The wounds of the past were still very fresh in her mind. Suddenly Alicia pulled away to study his face. What do you mean? She looked worried. I haven't given you a present yet, he said, taking a small box from his pocket. Although it was slightly wrinkled from being in his pants, it was wearing a bright red bow. Alicia took it from his fingers and looked at him. Can I open it? Sure, unless you want to wait until Christmas, he laughed. When she took the lid off the box, her eyes widened and her mouth fell open. Her pulse began to quicken and she took a deep breath. Darling, how? Where are you? Tears filled her beautiful blue eyes and rolled down her cheeks. She tenderly and reverently took her grandmother's ring from the box. I, I never thought I'd see that ring again. How did you find him? While I appreciate what you did, Dexter replied, I just couldn't accept that you had to give up something so precious to prove your love for me. Then I remembered that the GPS on my phone has a history. I've returned along routes you've only taken once. I knew it wasn't a hair salon or a restaurant, so I looked at the address. It was a pawn shop. This should have been where you sold the ring. And they still had it. After all this time? Well, not really, he said, a little embarrassed. I've had it for a while now. I actually got it just a few days after we got back together. I, uh, was going to give it to you right away, but... But you thought you needed to punish me a little more. I can't blame you for that, she said, wiping away tears of joy. Yeah, well, your birthday was just a couple of months away. I thought it would be a good time for a gift. Oh God, darling, I swear. I swear on this ring that I will be the most faithful and loving wife a man could dream of. She sobbed, hugging him and showering him with kisses. Never has one party brought so much destruction to so many people's lives. At least not in this city. Vicky thought she was lucky. Her husband never had much of a temperament, and other than the silent treatment, she didn't think that her little incident with sex would cause big problems in their marriage. She was wrong. Over time, her husband became more and more estranged. He lost interest in sex in her and in their marriage. He eventually found another woman and divorced Vicky. He never liked confrontation, but when it was all over, Vicky looked back and realized that their problems began on that fateful day in May. Mindy's husband, Mark, was forced to drop his lawsuit against the company, but managed to get the dancer fired. He considered it a small victory. The divorce battle lasted for months. Mark hired an experienced lawyer and went on the offensive. In an attempt to gain full custody of their four-year-old son, he tried to declare Mindy an unfit mother. Mindy was fighting for her existence. In the end, she was able to avoid being charged with unfitness and was awarded custody of their son, along with a small amount of child support, but not much more. Sylvia and Manny are still fighting. They spent more than two years in counseling and went through three therapists. They are still together, but the marriage is not the same as it used to be. Manny would never fully trust his wife again and subjected her to repeated interrogations. Every day she regrets pulling down the dancer's thong. Now she prays every day that Manny will truly forgive her.
but it doesn't look like that will happen anytime soon. Meredith and David were able to fix everything. After each found out about the other's infidelity, they actually talked to each other for the first time in years. Both discovered that there was still a smoldering spark in their marriage and made efforts to fan the flames. They promised each other not to cheat or take each other for granted anymore, but to work on their relationship. So far, so good. Vanessa was out of luck. Terry hated all the travel he had to do for work. He always preferred to be at home with his wife and children. When he found out what happened in his own home while he was fulfilling his duties as a husband and father, he felt it as a betrayal and was deeply hurt. In the divorce, he had children every other weekend. At work, he asked his boss to take him off business trips so as not to miss any of these precious weekends. When he was refused, he quit. After several months of unemployment, he found a job with a much smaller company at half his previous salary. As a result, his alimony payments were reduced. Vanessa received a small promotion at work, but it wasn't enough. Currently, in addition to working at Johnson's insurance company, she also works as a waitress at night to make ends meet. Wendy's life clearly didn't turn out the way she planned. After the disaster and humiliation at the reception, she returned to her parents. There she cried for two days in a row. When the tears stopped, her parents talked to her. They said they loved her and would support her because she was their daughter. But there was disappointment in their eyes. Wendy was too embarrassed to go back to work for Johnson, so after a month of feeling sorry for herself, she took a job as a receptionist at another insurance company for a fraction of the salary she was making as a secretary. She still lives with her parents and does not go out or date men. However, this does not apply to her ex-husband. Immediately after Aaron's marriage was annulled, one of his bridesmaids, Judith, came to him to console him. Aaron didn't know that she had always had a crush on him, but couldn't act on it because Wendy was her friend. At first their relationship was purely platonic. That changed one night when Aaron couldn't bear the thought of her going home. They married seven months later. Dexter and Alicia are still very much in love with each other. Alicia doesn't know if her loving husband thinks about her wrongdoing. He certainly hasn't mentioned it since he said he forgave her. She, however, thinks about it every day. Every day she remembers how close she came to losing the love of her life, and every day she makes a new vow to herself that she will treat her man with love, respect, and loyalty. End. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you, and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one.